I'm going to go over the basic principles of Aperture Library Organization and the tools that we use to do that. The most uh, important thing you need to know about the Aperture Library and its organization is the, the project folder. That's where you put your photos. That's what you import your photos into. Now granted there's other things you can do. There's exceptions to what I'm saying. But for the most part you want to import your pictures into a project. Inside that project you can do many things um, by creating a new folder, a new album, smart album, book, light table, slideshow, or uh, web journals or pages. In this case I always have what I call a standard project inside my Aperture library that I'll bring in every time I create a new library and with this I can uh, do a right click duplicate project structure to uh, create a, an identical version of that that's empty. It's very helpful to do that and then I have some consistency and inside that project I have these smart folders built that will automatically populate with the parameters that I've set up inside. I'll go into that in just a moment. Um, and normally you can create these things here. This is probably the most intuitive uh, way to do it. Now there's been a lot of confusion by people with regard to the blue folder. Um, it, there's, it can be used two ways and the way I use it most is to use it as a way to organize projects and you'll see that inside of uh, my personal folder I have you know things that aren't Oregonian or aren't a freelance assignment or whatever they're just things like like iPhone pictures and uh, maybe the occasional contest or you know here's some of my you know family snaps and all that kind of stuff like here's the kids uh, playing basketball you know I'll put that in my personal folder and you'll see that these other blue folders it's early in the year so this library is kind of new there's not a lot of stuff in it yet um, like the Oregonian here is January and February all my assignments with projects inside of that and you'll see I also have the occasional folder inside of a folder that's uh, possible to do too in this case this is 10 or 8 days of BCS uh, championship uh, coverage that I did in Arizona but there's so many of it of the same thing I wanted to organize it a little bit inside the January blue folder and of course as the months go on these will populate with January February March and all that so um, that's the blue folder. An album is another container to store pictures essentially and there's uh, two ways to populate it with pictures. You can select uh, the pictures you want in. Of course I'm doing this very randomly. Uh, you can select them, go to album, name the album if you choose, hit OK and it will automatically populate with those photos that were highlighted, selected. Or you can simply drag pictures into that album. Let's take a look. There they are. This is a great way to just store pictures that you can't necessarily search or populate with a smart album. Um, in this case, uh, an appropriate use would be to say, oh, I want all the motorcycle pictures to be in an album and then build another album and say I want just the car pictures to be in an album. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about that you wouldn't necessarily have metadata for that. It's a, it's a really good way to organize pictures within a project. Let's go to uh, a book. Now in this case I have some photos of um, a little art show with some motorcycles out front and things of that nature and let's say I want to make a little book so we've selected some pictures we go up we go to book and with this we get some choices of sizes let's say a little medium book we'll give it a picture book style we'll choose our theme and it automatically populates our book project with those pictures 
and we're free to uh, start designing pages as we see fit. Now that's a whole other tutorial. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Um, let's go. Let's look at a light table and what we can do with that. So again, same principle. It has now populated those pictures because, as you recall, I had all these one star photos uh, selected, and when I created a book and created a light table, it automatically populates uh, those projects as, I want, I want to call them projects, but populates the book, populates the light table albums with those 13 pictures I had selected. And now here we are with a light table and we're free to drag these photos up here and experiment and play around with uh, layout ideas. It's a really nice tool to experiment with and see how um, pictures relate to each other. Um, being printed or even in a web layout or something of that nature. So we can uh, just basically monkey around with that. Let's throw one more up here because we're here. Why not? Let's do it. Yeah, so and there you go. It's a quick easy way to see what you have and, and uh, look around a little bit. Experiment. <coughs> of course you can print this and do whatever you need to do with it. Um, let's go back up here. I'm sorry, I just bad mouse skills. Um, so book, light table, slideshow. Again, let's go to our one star. We will create a slideshow. Choose theme. And boom, uh, our 13 one star pictures are now in this slideshow. It automatically puts them on the timeline. And we can push play and see what that looks like. Of course, there's a ton of options over here. You can go Ken Burns effect. You can uh, put transition, different transitions in. You can throw a video in there. You can uh, put music from your iTunes library, whatever you want to do. And then, of course, export it as a QuickTime for all other kinds of uses. And I'm not going to go into um, a web journal and web page. Those are tutorials on their own, but you get the idea. You select a group of photos and you create a new web journal or a new web page and organize it as you see fit. It's the same principle as the book and the slideshow. Um, that may be all I wanted to talk about in this quick tutorial. It's a very simple thing. It's fundamental to the way you interact with Aperture and I still see a lot of uh, questions out there about it in the uh, world of internet forums and all that, that that people ask questions of Aperture so I thought it'd be worth a nice little uh, video tutorial to break that down. Thanks.